Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the award of the degree of Doctor of Social Science, Honoris Causa, Kaiser Motang. There's a rumor that Kaiser Chiefs is the nation's happy odometer. When Makosi win, life is good, and everyone is filled with a sense of joy and happiness. However, when they lose, the mood is bleak, and there are even protests in the streets. They have the largest supporter base in Southern Africa, and Makosi faithful wear their gold and black and give the peace hand sign with love and pride. They love their team. They live it 24-7. They name their children after their favorite players. They plan weddings, christenings, birthday celebrations, and even memorial services and funerals around the game schedule. So who is Amakosi? And more to the point, who is Kaiser Motang? But who even needs to ask that? Kaiser Motang was born in Orlando East, Soweto, in 1944. He started playing football very young and was already professional at the age of 16. Ironically, he started his career by playing for Orlando Pirates. He was known for his spellbinding ball control, vision, and clinical finishing, and he was given the name Chinchakuluva, the man with the quick feet. His exploits attracted U.S. attention, and he moved overseas in 1968 to play for Atlanta Chiefs. Mutang made his debut as a substitute in a friendly game against Manchester City, and he scored two goals in that first match. He continued his brilliant streak, and he scored 16 goals in 15 matches. And that, that made him the top scorer in that league that season. At the height of apartheid, Matang returned from the States, sporting an afro, and having turned down an offer worth a million dollars, instead created Kaiser Chiefs. This started as a small, professionally run club which prided itself on selecting the best players and paying them what was promised on time. This sounds quite reasonable today, but at that time, it was quite a challenge to the status quo. His approach paid off as fans thronged to the games to be part of the excitement of a team that was brimming with fantastic players. Joseph Banks at Lordi, Masika and Ryder Moffa King, Petrus Ten Ten Nibande, Vusi Computer Lamola, Pele Blaschka, 
and Abednego, Shaka, and Gobel were among the giants that created the exuberant, flowing, entertaining, winning football that built Kaiser Chiefs. From being viewed as upstarts, Kaiser Chiefs FC is now the most successful club in South African football history. Matang's contributions to soccer have extended far beyond Kaiser Chiefs, as well as beyond South Africa. During the sports boycott of the 80s, Matang discovered that a boycott-breaking team were on their play way to play in South Africa. Not only that, but Kaiser Chiefs were due to be the international team's first opponents. Matang was horrified. He mobilized political and football bodies to put pressure on the government and sporting groups to halt the tour, which was eventually canceled. And this is something that Matang still lists as one of his greatest achievements. Matang was a member of the 2006 and 2010 South African FIFA World Cup bid committee, as well as part of the local organizing committee established to oversee the 2010 FIFA World Cup, an event which is regarded as one of the most successfully organized FIFA World Cups ever. He was instrumental in setting up the South African Premier Soccer League, and in 2014 was awarded South Africa's Order of Ikamanga Silver Class. Matang is a football visionary who has created a legacy to carry the hopes and dreams of young football players who later become sports personalities, professional academics, and public figures. And Kaiser Chiefs is much more than a brand. It is a social and political movement that has captured the imagination of South African football supporters far and wide. It has brought pride and joy to the oppressed majority at a time when light and hope was most needed in this country. Amakosi for life. <laughs> Chancellor, I have the honor to present for the award of the degree of Doctor of Social Science, Honoris Causa, Kaiser Motang. Congratulations to our honorary graduates, and we now want to invite Ntate Keizam Taung to address us. The Chancellor, Dr. Precious Muloi Mutsepe, Vice Chancellor, Professor Rosina Mamukheti Pake, Vice Chancellors of other universities present, Deputy Vice Chancellors, Deans and Directors, Registrars, teach, Teaching and Non Teaching Staff, Parents and Guardians graduates and students, political parties present here today. I see the EFF is holding the floor. I 
allow me to express my sincere gratitude to be associated with this great institution. It is important for me to express my humble pleasure to set foot in the grounds of this magnificent campus and amid luminaries that are here today. Let me recognize Chancellor Dr. Precious Muloy Mutsipe as a philanthropist, fashion entrepreneur, and it is worth mentioning that Dr. Muloy Mutsipe and her husband, Dr. Petrice Mutsipe, through the Mutsipe Foundation, contribute immensely towards eradicating poverty and to sustainably improve the living conditions and standards of living of the poor, unemployed, and marginalized people in South Africa, Africa, and the world. And recently, the foundation was involved in the intervention programs in the flood trouble KwaZulu-Natal and the Eastern Cape areas. When I received the invitation from the Vice Chancellor, I found this indeed an honor, particularly as it comes when I see a University of Cape Town is ranked top in Africa by the Kokoreli Simons World Universities rankings in 2023, released in in June 2022. The university is currently ranked number one in Africa by all five major uni university rankings. The Q QS rankings, time higher Africa by all, uh, time higher education rankings, Shanghai rankings, academy rankings of the world universities, Center for World University Rankings and the U.S. News and World Report Best Global Universities. And I think this is remarkable and really deserves a round of applause. <laughs> I wish to express my gratitude to the university and Professor Mamoheti Pakein for this invitation and honor. I am glad to know, Professor, you were recently elected chair of the International Alliance of Research Universities in May 2022, taking over from Professor Jay Toop, the vice chancellor of the University of Cambridge. All the best in your two year term from 2023 to 2025. This, will, this well deserved accolade is distinguished as it will be for the first time in the history of the IARU. The organization will be led by an African. To put their cherry on top, Professor Pakeng just recently in June 2022 received an honorary doctorate from the University of Ottawa. She was among the nine distinguished individuals who received honorary doctorates for their substantial contribution to their profession, to science and also to society at large. It is the second honorary doctorate bestowed on Professor Pakeng by an international university in a period of three years. Following her, her being recognized by the UK Bristol University in June, July 2019. Well done, congratulations are in order, Professor Pakeng. <laughs> I have my little story to tell and share with the house here today. Just a little story. Just so you are all aware that I have not accepted invitations from other institutions to be honored. I did not disagree nor refuse to be honored easily. I did so as I felt I had not scratched the surface yet. 
I believe there's so much work outstanding to be done in our country. South Africa is beset with so many challenges, and I thought accepting an honor would not be justified at that stage. However, I stand here very proud and pleased to accept this honor from this institution. Growing up in Soweto, Orlando East, never did I imagine I will be standing here today. I started professional soccer at the age of 16 for the Orlando Pirates Football Club, and ironically, Pirates are arch rivals today of Kaiser Chiefs that we formed in 1970, 7th of July to be exact, of January to be exact. The first of my story to you is that whenever given an opportunity, do your best because you will never know who will be watching you. More so, you will never know when your moment will be. I had the privilege to apply my trade abroad, as in 1968, luck was on my side while in Zambia, to be spotted by the Atlanta Chiefs founder and owner, Dick Cecil, and former West Ham United player, Phil Woosner, who was manager of the Atlanta Chiefs at the time. The French and Atlanta Chiefs franchise in the then recently formed North American Soccer League. I was recruited while on team uh, trials in Zambia. That will go down in history as a turning point in my contribution to the society. I also want to share with you a lesson of life. There will always be humps in the process to reach your destination. And overcoming, uh, uh, when I arrived in Atlanta, I struggled to come to terms with the weather and overcoming injury. I played as a substitute in two friendly games against Manchester City, who had just been crowned the English League champions in England. And scoring two goals in the first game, we won. I went on to score the winning goal in the second match two weeks later in the same, in the same uh, tour. In the same season, I was able to score 16 goals in 15 matches. I became the top scorer in the league that season. As a result of this achievement, I was voted Rookie of the Year and gained a place on the North American Soccer League All-Star team. So if injury and weather conditions dictated, I would not be standing before you today. Today, I look back and say to myself, it was painful, but worth it. But to the graduates, what is key for me is in what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. titled the sweep, street sweeper when he said, I quote, if a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep the streets even as a, a Michelangelo painted or Beethoven composed music or Shakespeare written poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well, unquote. You must excel in whatever you do and decide to do in life. Another story to share is about Kaiser Chiefs. This story is about faith and carrying on with the journey under difficult circumstances. This is a story of a purpose-driven life. Living a purpose-driven life takes perseverance and determination. It takes making the decision to be kinder and more considerate than you were the day before. It takes admitting when you are wrong and then taking steps to make things better. We formed Kaiser Chiefs deep in the advent of apartheid in 1970 in the dusty streets of Pefeni in Soweto. We used our family home as a clubhouse. Thanks to my parents who allowed the and provided hospitality to the team, including the traveling supporters who would come in unannounced from time to time. 
Despite any setbacks and opposition, we proceeded and succeeded to assemble a team that has become a force to be reckoned with. Today, I look back and I'm thankful to many men and women, past and present, who believed in the journey of forming this colossal brand, Kaiser Chiefs. Within a short time, Kaiser Chiefs became the most successful team in South Africa, winning more than 90 trophies and gaining millions of supporters throughout the country. And indeed, it is often joked, jokingly stated that Kaiser Chiefs do not really play any away game matches, as their supporters always outnumber those of the home team. The last of the stories I want to share with you today is to see the bigger picture in the journey, your journey. I am proud and privileged to have witnessed us celebrating 50th anniversary of Kaiser Chiefs in 2020. In the process, Kaiser Chiefs have contributed to the society economically and politically alike. The club has produced some of the finest talent in the history of South African football. Who will forget the late Ace in Tulengwe, one of the finest talents South Africa ever witnessed? There are many other legends who contributed to, making, to the making of Kaiser Chiefs. And Orlando Pirates, Orlando, Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Pirates contributed to the peace efforts during the hype of a political tension in KwaZulu Natal in the early 90s. Through Kaiser Chiefs Foundation and partners, we contribute to poverty alleviation initiatives. These are some of the examples of the contribution that we are making in society. My message to the graduates today is that the world, not only South Africa, is waiting for you. There are many challenges facing the world today. Franz Fanon said, I quote, each generation must out of relative obscurity discover its mission, fulfill it, or betray it, unquote. The, way, the world is an oyster for you. Go out there and make a difference in your communities. Become part of the solutions and not a problem in the society. I wish to take this opportunity to congratulate fellow graduates for attaining your qualifications. I urge you to go out there, become good citizens, whatever your dream leads you, and wherever your dream leads you. I think it is appropriate for me at this point in time to also thank the UFF for their messages since two years ago, going for this award I'm bestowed upon today. So I wish to take this opportunity to thank the University of Cape Town, your parents and guardians for the sacrifices undertaken to support your education. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I owe this honor to the members of my family, my late parents, my wife, Chuleka, and children. But I would be amiss if I don't recognize the Kaiser Chiefs family in its entirety and corporates who have backed Kaiser Chiefs to become what it is today. I thank you. <laughs> 